Hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of Elevate. I'm really, really excited that you came, that you have tuned in, that you're listening. Uh, do let me know where you're watching from uh, so we can interact together. My name is Ivan Blessed Muhomoza Amoti and I'm privileged to be bringing you the word once again. What an honor it is. Can we pray together as is our custom? before we dive into the word. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, our hearts are open. Our minds are ready to receive. Our hearts are receptive. Father, this word is going to land on good ground and it's going to change us forever for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome once again. I encourage you to share the link. Invite your friends. Tell your relatives. Tell your Mets, tell your workmates. It's going to be a powerful word today. And we've been looking at our series uh, from the book of Matthew. Um, for the past four episodes, we are stuck in Matthew 4. A bit stuck, but it's a good thing. Uh, stuck in Matthew 4. There, there is lots to learn from the word of God. The word of God is so rich, so rich, so vast. can change your life if you embrace it. And so, in Matthew 4, we are looking at the temptations, okay? Started by saying that no matter who you are, you'll experience tests, and tests are a way for you to be promoted. And then we talked about the different versions of temptation and tests, the fact that um, when you are, uh, uh, there is the lust of the eyes, there is the lust of the flesh, there is the pride of life. Um, and then we talked, last week we talked about how Jesus overcame temptation. The fact that you and I have the ability to overcome temptation, Temptation is not a death sentence. We talked about the truth that um, um, because uh, Jesus, that God provides a way, an escape out of every temptation. And one of the predominant ways, the key ways, the primary ways we can escape temptation is through the word of God. And read different scriptures to that effect in our previous episode. You can check it out. And today, I still want to lean in a bit on the power of the word of God and overcoming temptation. Because at times we think, I don't know, it's a hearsay or it's a thing that cannot happen. But it's real. It's true. It works. It works. So Jesus' response to the devil, again as we read in Matthew 4, 4, he said, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And he says, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. That is in Matthew 4, 7. And Matthew 4.10, Jesus answered and said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him, you shall, and him only you shall serve. Jesus' response to the devil, to the enemy, whenever he was tempted, was the word of God. Oh, the word of God is so powerful. There is nothing that the devil fears like a man who is anchored in the word of God. Because he knows that once a man is anchored in the word of God, you can't lie to the man. Because the word of God is truth. Jesus says, sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. And the chief weapon of the enemy is lies, deceit. He's the father of liars. And so he knows that a man who is anchored in truth cannot be defeated. A man who is anchored in the word cannot be defeated. A man who is anchored in the truth of God, no matter what lie you throw at them, yeah, they're going to just keep riding through it. They will overcome. It's like a man walking with a light, a lamp. Whatever hurdle you put, they will just go past the hurdle because they can see it. In fact, they see you putting the hurdle. So you can't just overcome them because they are. That's what happens when you are anchored in the word of God. And so, Last week as we were speaking, I, I decided that this week I'll share with you a testimony. I'll share with you a testimony. And, and of course we'll read some scriptures, but I'll share with you a testimony. One of the things that people struggle with on earth, one of the vices, sexual vices that people struggle with on earth, is, um, is pornography. Think called pornography. It's a temptation I faced when I was still younger. When I was in my, when I was 14 years old, I was introduced to doing pornography. 
So I started doing pornography and I did it because, you remember the pride of life? The coolest guys in school seemed to be the ones who did what? Who did porn. So I also started. Then it ended up in the lust of the flesh. It felt good to appease myself watching sexual scenes. Scenes, S-E, S-C-E-N-E. <laughs> yeah, on screen. It became so bad to the point that I started recruiting other people to watch pornography and supplying pornography. This was before I got born again. And when I got born again, of course I know pornography is not a good thing. It's not a thing that God has created. That's not the way God has created us to appease ourselves sexually. It is a worldly thing. Sex was created for marriage between man and woman. That's where sex is supposed to be. That is the right boundary for sex. And it is not in the mind. It is a physical, like you engage physically. And so this whole thing of having sex in the mind, it's, it's a lie. It's giving you pseudo-sexual pleasure. So I had pseudo-sexual pleasure. Young boy, confused, what? And when I got born again when I was 14, I still remember that day I was going to commit suicide. I was 14 years old. And a young man called Remus Mark came and preached the gospel to me. The very night I was going to commit suicide. Many of my friends didn't know. Actually, all of them did not know. My parents didn't know. Nothing. I was going to commit suicide. I'll tell you maybe about this story another time. But I was going to commit suicide. And then that young man came and preached to me. And I gave my life to Jesus. Now what happened is that after I gave my life to Jesus, you would think that in that instant, pornography was no more. Uh-uh. <laughs> Even after I got born again, the temptation still came. You see, Jesus, temptation doesn't know spiritual heights. Regardless of how high you are spiritually, you will be tempted. Can you imagine there was a guy in the presence of God, one of the archangels, and he was tempted with pride. In the presence of God in heaven, he was tempted with pride. And he fell. So, of course, temptation knows no bounds. Even Jesus was the son of God. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, you would think that by that time, eh, his body doesn't want food. What? Hakuna. He was tempted. Anyway, I was telling you that after I got born again, <laughs> after I got born again, I thought that temptation is gone. No more pornographic images. And then I would find myself. I'm in fellowship. I'm praying. I'm singing songs. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Hey! I even joined the worship team. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and the angels bow. And if you saw me on the outside with my eyes closed, you would think I'm picturing a scene in heaven. With the angels and the elders bowing. My goodness, God me. It wasn't the case. I would be closing my eyes and the images would flash through my face. The sexual scenes would flash through my face. I'm like, I thought I'm born again. I can tell you that a few times, not, not a lot of the time, but a few times, I was tempted to go back and watch the pornography. Even when I was born again. I was tempted. And there are a few times that I fell. And I knew it wasn't the right thing for me. So I started praying. I would tell God, God, I don't like this thing. I'm struggling with it. Take it away from me. I don't like it. And I know many of you, you might even be watching me right now. And you're doing something you don't like. Paul writes of himself and he says, Oh, wretched man I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? That the things I don't want to do are the things I do. The things I want to do, I don't do. How wretched man I am. And you might be like me. When I was, when I was then, struggling with an addiction, you've tried to get out of it. You're like, God, what is the way out of this? And you know, I tried. I broke the CDs, compact discs. Broke them. I tried to distance myself from the people I used to watch it with. What? Nothing seemed to work. And then I stumbled on a solution by mistake. I was tormented on the inside by that. Seriously tormented. I was in church and tormented. I didn't have peace. 
Anyway, so I I join, I I, I finally join. Uh, I, I'm in fellowship, I'm in the scripture union, I was in Kira College Butiki, a school here in, in Uganda, in Jinja. So I, I started what I started reading the word of God. Now it, it I'm sure it was the mercy of God. So I started reading the word of God, huge chunks of the word of God. I read the word of God. I read the book of Isaiah. I had a good news Bible that had stick me. As a stickman drawn in the Bible. Yeah, I read that Bible. I read it. I read that. I read Isaiah. I read Psalms. I read Proverbs. I read John. I read the different stories in First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings, Genesis. I basically just went for the stories. I wasn't reading the, all these theological things. Uh, at that time, I never understood anything. Romans, what? I'm like, I don't understand those things. Hebrews, I'm like, no, no, no. I just went for stories. My arrangement was in the morning while other people were going to have breakfast, I would be reading my Bible. When people were going to have break, reading my Bible. When people were going to have lunch, reading my Bible. That became my food. It became my daily food. And I cannot tell you at what point that desire to watch pornography left me. I cannot mark the exact time or day or week or month when I stop. But I, I, as, as sure as the sun rises from the east and sets in the west, the images just disappeared out of my head. Then I didn't understand why. But now when I look back, I know, I know how God delivered me from temptation. Here. I was in the word of God. I put so much light in my heart that I was transformed. The Bible says, let me read the scripture for you. It is in Romans 12 too. I want to miss a single word of it. I want to miss a single word of it. Romans 12 too. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation comes as a result of renewing your mind. If you want to be transformed to live like God, your mind must be renewed to think like God. Yeah. I had to begin reading the Bible. I read it. I read the Bible. Look, I know this is not a common remedy to temptation. Yeah, because the world has lied to you that there are all these solutions that you can have. That there are all these things they will take you here, tell you avoid this, avoid what. All the things you have. I used to watch pornography in secret, so I didn't need to avoid anything. I was with myself the whole time. The images were in my head. I could not avoid my head. Yeah, so all these things that the people tell you on the outside, food. The truth is that you can overcome anything by the word. The word, you can be transformed by your mind being renewed. There is no temptation too strong or temptation too hard that can stand in the face of the word. The word of God will break it no matter how hard it is. It will break it and it will be like chaff and go away like chaff. Yeah, it's been more than 18 years since. 18, maybe 16. About there. Maybe 16 or 15 years. Rather, 16 years since. And I have not watched or seen or thought of anything like pornography in my life. It's, a, it's no longer disturbs me. Why? The, the word of God. I want to dare you to try. Try. As I was sharing my testimony, I remembered a certain gentleman. One of our pastors, Pastor B3, a gentleman walked up to him and said, I am struggling with an addiction. I'm smoking lots of things. I don't know what to do. I am tempted the whole time. And Pastor B3 told, told him, but the next time you smoke, say I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The next time you catch a cigarette, say, yes, I, uh, the Bible says I am the righteousness of God. He made him you no know, sin to become sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The man said that. I don't remember for what period. Maybe three weeks or so. 
and the urge to be addicted to substances was known. Believe me, you, the word of God works. It can take you out of any form of temptation, no matter how big, no matter how grand, no matter how long you've held it. By the word, you can be free. The Bible says in Psalms, in Psalms, I'll read it for you. I'll read it for you. Psalms, I'm about to find it. It says, blessed, blessed. They're talking about me, of course. <laughs> blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Boy, I can tell you there is a counsel of the ungodly out there. They'll give you ungodly counsel about things. There is a path of sinners. There is a way sinners walk and live their lives. There is a seat of the scornful. And he says, a man whose delight is in the word of the Lord. You will not find yourself standing in any path of sinners. You will not find yourself sitting in the seat of the scornful or chilling with the wicked. You will not. You will not. Why? Because there is a God. <laughs> There is a God who is true to his word. He says of his word that, that it will accomplish whatever he has sent it to accomplish. Yeah. That is what he says of his word. That his word will accomplish whatever he has sent it to accomplish. That it is like the rain. Yeah. It will accomplish whatever he has sent it to accomplish. So that's what happened to me. I was reading the Bible. I was reading the Bible. I was reading the Bible. And before I knew it, sin was out of my picture. I could no longer... Look, no matter what the devil does, when it comes to pornography, he can no longer tempt me. Yeah. I overcame that side of my life. Not by might or by power. No. I tried on my own and I failed. And I know you out there, you've tried. <laughs> you've tried. Yeah. But once I got into the word and I started reading the word and I started memorizing the word and I spent every possible time I could with my Bible. God changed me. God transformed my life. God healed me. God delivered me from the addiction of pornography. Remember Jesus is an example of us. By age 12, he knew all scripture. That is why he could not err. Like he told those people, in the Pharisees in Matthew 22, 29, when he told them that you err, you make mistakes because you don't know the scriptures. I can tell you one of the reasons many people fall for temptation is because they don't know the scriptures. Yeah. If you knew the scriptures, there is no way you would fall for temptation. You would smell it from afar. And you would run. You would know. You would hear. God told the Israelites that you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. 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 That is what happens when you know the word of God. And so Jesus is responding to the devil. And saying, devil, I know this is what you want me to do. But this is what the word of God says. This, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. My friend, my brother, my sister. I don't know what temptation it is that you're facing in your life. I don't know for how long you've faced it. I don't know what voices you hear in your mind. I don't know what whispers the enemy has brought to you over and over and over again. 
I don't know. But I can tell you, I know one sure ticket to get out of every temptation like Jesus did in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. It is the word of God. You'll never go wrong with the word. You'll never fail with the word. Yes. You won't be stuck when you have the word. You will progress. You will rise. You will shine. You will rise above every addiction. You will rise above every circumstance. You will rise above every battle. You will rise above every enemy. You will rise and so high above anything because you know the word, because the word is your companion in life. The word of God is your companion in life. And so like Jesus, I want to invite you to live this life. The life that our Lord lived. Where his response to every temptation was not tears, was not complaining, was not determination. Some of you think that your determination will get you to overcome sin. No! No! I wrote down cheats. I said, God, I'll never do this again. If I do it, over strike me with what? Oh, thank God for mercy. Determination won't save you. Tears won't save you from temptation. Running away from it won't save you. Because you will just be running into it. Yeah. The only thing that can save you from temptation is the word of God. When you just look at the devil in the face and tell him, devil, it is written. It is written. And I am going to do what is written. I'm not going to do what I feel like or do not feel like doing. I'm not going to do what I've heard, what the other people did. No, I'm going to do what the word of God has told me to do. And you're faced with temptation to sleep with a man or with a woman, when you're not yet married, to have sex. Yeah, you remember that the order is a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And you will tell your feelings, align. Wait for the day I get married to this person. That is when I am going to have sex. Because the word of God says so. If you go by your feelings, you're finished. Because your feelings, are go are, they are not going to agree with the word of God. Your feelings will want to have sex before marriage. Even your body. But the word of God says otherwise. Yeah. The word of God says otherwise. Let God be true. Let his word be true. Let everything else in your life be the lie. And keep God's word truth. Keep it center to your life. And you will see how you will just be bashing every test, every temptation, every word. You see, the word of God, as I conclude, the word of God is like, have you ever gone for an open book exam? Where you know the, where, okay, sometimes open book exams can be complicated. But, eh, assume, assume the, the good scenario. Where the question has been asked, you have the exact answer. And you know where the answer is. It's not these things of just guessing. You're moving around. No. You know where the answer is. You just go there and you read. And you write the answer. Write the answer. That's what the Bible is. We are not supposed to suffer in life. We are supposed to thrive in life. Especially when we live by the word of God. I hope that testimony encourages you. Share this, share this episode with anyone who struggles with any form of addiction. I can tell you my testimony and my experience is that the word of God will deliver them much faster and the deliverance will stay permanently because the Bible says whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah. So that means if something else sets you free, you cannot be free indeed. Only the Son can set you free and you're free indeed. Share this. Let people know you don't have to live in bondage. Today I'm going to pray for anyone who has struggled with any form of addiction. I'll pray for you toward the end. But before I do that, I would like to invite you. If you've never given your life to Jesus. You see, everything I've talked about begins by you receiving Christ. Because in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. That is Jesus talking about Christ. The Word that became flesh. 
And so I'd like you to receive Jesus in your heart today. Just say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Today, I surrender my heart to you. I believe that you're the son of God. And I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. Take my life. Do something significant with it. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of champions, the family of overcomers, the family of, of, of lovers. We love. Huh? Oh yeah, it's a wonderful thing. The family of people who are not going to fail in life because we have Jesus and we have the word. Yeah, so please contact us on that number. I would like to walk this journey with you. And I promise to pray for anyone who has struggled with any form of addiction. Look, I've seen God deliver me by his word from addiction. And so I would like to pray for you so you can be delivered from the sin. Father, thank you for my friends who are watching right now. I've seen you deliver me by the power of your word. I've seen you change my life by the power of your word. I've seen you help me overcome temptation of sexual sin by the power of your word. And so today, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the devil who causes people to be addicted to substances, to be addicted to sexual sin, to be addicted to things in the mind, in their souls, that they literally have no control over. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. And from today, Father, I declare freedom. Because the Bible says, whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Like you set me free, I send freedom to everyone who is watching this episode or listening to me today. In the name of Jesus, you are free. In the name of Jesus, you are going, that desire for that addiction is going to be replaced by a desire of the word of God. You're going to become a hard follower of God. You're going to read his word. You're going to believe his word. You are going to memorize his word. Your mind is going to be filled with images of heaven and not images of sin. Your mind is going to be filled with scriptures from today. And I declare that as you do that, as you read the word, your desires are going to be changed and you are going to become the best version of yourself that there can ever be. In Jesus' name, amen. Please share with me those testimonies. I know God is going to do amazing things in your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Catch you in the next episode as we continue in the book of Matthew. God bless you.